When you're first starting out with a new style of music, what better way to do it than to use something you already know to create a whole new sound? So in this tutorial, we're going to use the basic open chords that you learned in Guitar Fundamentals to play some rock. So first we're going to talk about how to dial a rock and guitar tone. Then we're going to adapt the basic open chords to work well with this tone. And finally, we're going to play through some really fun examples exploring all of these new sounds. So let's get started. So much of rock guitar playing has to do with the tone and the attitude you're using. So let's start with the tone. I'm using my Fender Stratocaster for this tutorial, but you can use any guitar for the examples. I'm using my bridge pickup to get it extra aggressive sounding. Going straight into the amp with a clean tone, it sounds like this. The amp's gain is set to 3 out of 10, so the tone is nice, clean and pretty. Now we'll check out what happens when we turn up the gain. You immediately notice that it gets louder, so in order to keep the volume the same and just change the sound, we're going to turn down the master volume. You notice now that it's breaking up, overdriving, or distorting. All those terms or shades of the same basic sound, which is really gritty and cool. Originally, amps didn't have a master volume and gain like that. They just had a volume, and when you turn it up really loud, it would distort. But since that's pretty inconvenient, people started using a master volume to compensate for that or using overdrive pedals to simulate the sound of the amp breaking up. But we'll get into much more of that later. The important thing to notice right now is that the more of this overdrive effect you add, the more your voicings will start sounding cluttered and messy. That means you'll have to adapt your voicings to work well with this tone, and that's what I'll show you how to do in the following lessons. First let me show you how to adapt the chords A, D and G to this rock tone. And once you've learned the basic voicings, we're going to practice switching between them with a metronome and finally check out what they sound like over a rock backing track. So far you've been taught to play the A major chord like this, second fret of the D, G and B string. But as we talked about in the earlier lesson, that ends up sounding really cluttered with this tone. So instead we're going to bar across the second fret of the D, G and B string with our first finger. And then the bar is going to mute the high E string so that we only hear the middle four strings. Our thumb is reaching up here and we need low E string. Because the whole idea is that you want to make sure that you're controlling the chord with your left hand so that your right hand can just strum freely. So it's all about the attitude and the last thing you want is for your right hand to have to worry about which strings it's going to hit. So make sure you get the muting down. It's just as important as the notes you play are the ones you don't play. So Spend some time getting these two E strings muted. That's our A major chord. Depending on how much gain you have, you may even find that the third up here in the B string, this note gets cluttered, so you can just sort of let go a little bit so that that note is also muted. And you've now stripped it down to sort of an open voicing of a power chord, one, five, and eight, or one. Right, but for now we're going to keep the major third on the B string in there. It's so, A chord. Then the D chord, you've been taught to play up here. Second, third, and second fret, the top three strings. But now we're going to strip it down to just the basic D5 voicing, which we do by letting go with our second finger here and making sure that our third finger is touching the E string and muting it so that we only get the middle four strings again. A, D, A, and D. Scale-wise, it's five, one, five, one. And because you only have the one and the five, it sounds much clearer, even with a distorted tone. So switch between that and the A. Pretty easy, right? Because your first finger just moves up to the G string, and your third finger just goes on in the third fret of the B string. It's already kind of hanging over there when you're playing the A, right? Notice those little pickup strums I'm doing. And I want You don't have to do that, but it's a cool way to spice it up a little bit if you're feeling up for it. Then we have our G chord. And previously you've been taught to play the G chord like this. As you can hear, that gets kind of cluttered. And a big part of that is that you have the one and the three so close together and the bass strings. Sounds really messy, so we're gonna let go with our first finger here and make sure the A string is muted by our second finger. 
And in many contexts, it's gonna sound great to have the high root note up here, the third fret of the high E string, play your pinky. But for today, we're just gonna keep it to these four strings, the low E string, the D, and the G, and the B string. Notice that the A string is muted by my second finger, and the high E string is muted by my third finger. Again, so we can just strum freely in our right hand without having to worry about what strings we hit. For this little example, we're gonna go A major for a whole bar, four counts, and then D for two counts, and G for two counts, and back to A for two bars where you just let it ring. One, two, three, four. So with the pickup strums, two, three, four, D to G to A, and let it ring for two bars. Four, one, two, three, four. We're gonna do that whole thing four times. Now it's time to play through this example extra slowly with the metronome so you can play along and practice switching between the chords. Now let's check out what it sounds like up to speed with the backing track. Now let me show you how to adapt your C chord to this rock tone. And as soon as you've learned the basic voicing, we're gonna use it in an example with the G and D chord as well. Check it out. So you just learned the G chord, right? Like this. All you do to turn this into a C chord is move your second finger up to the A string instead. Sounding like this. You don't want it to sound like this. Because again, the notes you aren't playing are just as important as the notes you do play. So let's work on the muting for a little bit. First you want to make sure that the low E string is muted. I do this with my thumb, but you could also do it with the tip of your second finger like that. But the tricky thing about that is that your second finger also has to mute the D string. So I recommend the low E string with your thumb and then fretting the third fret of the A string with your second finger and making sure that it's also touching the D string. G string rings open and then B string rings from the third fret it with your third finger. So, so far we have, right? The high E string is muted by your third finger in the same manner that the D string is muted by your second finger. So, it's tricky working in the muting to your basic fretting, but it's really, really important for this stuff. Again, so that your right hand can just focus on the attitude instead of having to worry about what strings not to hit. So this could be called a C sus 2 or a C5 add 9, but don't worry too much about what to call it theoretically for right now, because the players that started using it and created this sound just used it because it sounded cool. For this example, we're gonna start on G. We're gonna go to the C. I'm just gonna call it C for now. To the D and back to G. So it's G major for a full bar, and then two beats on C, and two beats on D. And then two full bars in G. Two, three, four. One, two, three. Again. G, two, three, four. C, two, D, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna do that four times as well. And now let's play through the example at a slower tempo with the metronome so you can practice it.
And now let's check out what it sounds like up to speed with a rock backing track. Now let me show you how to adapt the E chord to this rock tone. And as soon as you've learned that, we're going to use it in an example with the A and D chord as well. Check it out. The E major rock voicing is probably the easiest one out of all of them because it's very close to how we have it. Right, this is how you learn it already. The only thing is again that sometimes this interval between the root note and the third gets kind of messy with this tone. So what we do is instead of pressing down with your first finger, you just let go of the pressure, but you keep it there so that G string is muted. You don't want it to ring open, but then it sounds minor. You just want it to not be ringing, right? This way we only have the one, the five, the one, the five, and the one. And it's an E5. We'll just call it E for now. And if you feel like your tone allows it, you can press down the first fret of the G string and get the E major sound, but you're probably safer just leaving it out. So for this example, we're upping the pace a little bit. We're gonna go A for full bar, the tempo is faster, and then to D, to E, and then that repeats. So it's just a two bar phrase now as opposed to a four bar cycle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, repeat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're gonna do that whole thing four times as well. And now let's play through this little progression extra slowly with the metronome so you can practice switching between the chords. Now let's check out what it sounds like up to speed with the backing track. And now let me show you a whole little example of a song form that incorporates all of these chords and techniques. Check it out. So for the intro, we're going to start out playing A for full bar, and then going D to D for half bar each, and then back to A for two bars. So it's very similar to what we had in the earlier example, except that we flipped the D and the G chord. So now it's A, G, three, four, G, D, A, G, three, let it ring, one, two, Three, repeat A, two, three, four, G, D, A, two, three, four, one, two, three, and that's the intro. Then we're gonna go into the verse section, and for that, we're just gonna go A major for a bar, two, three, four, to D, one, two, full bar, to E, full bar, two, four, to D, two, three, four, and repeat that, one, two, A, D, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, to D. Then we enter the chorus. And the chorus picks up the pace a little bit in order to create the feeling of a climax in the song, right? And we're starting with the G chord. We're we'll going to the D chord, and back to the G chord, and to the A chord. So let's practice that. G, 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 A. And then we go G, D, A, two, three, four. So that whole thing. G, D, G, A, G, D, A, two, three, four. Then that whole thing repeats apart from the last chord. So G, D, G, 
A G D E. So instead of ending on A, we just end on E now. And that's the whole chorus. And all of these chords are half a bar, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we go back to a verse, which was just A, three, four, D, two, three, to E, two, three, four, D, two, three, again, A. E, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. D. Back to a chorus. G, D, G, A. G, D, A. Second half. G, D, G, A. G, D, E. Then we're going to play an outro, and the outro is exactly the same as the intro. So A, two, three, four. G. D, A. And whenever we're playing these chords, you'll notice that the bass doesn't follow it. It just stays on A, which creates a lot of tension, which is great to do for an intro and an outro. It's much more tense than if it was following the harmony. So that's a really cool trick to use. Just have the bass stay on the same note while you're changing chords. And now let's play through each of these sections at a slower tempo with the metronome so you can practice them. And now let's play through the whole song form up to speed with the backing track. So you can play along if you're ready for it. And if not, you can always just watch and listen a couple times before you start playing along yourself. Here goes.
hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and realized how the tone you're using and the notes you choose to play often go hand in hand when you're playing rock. And that's not a concept that's limited to the chord voicings we've covered in this tutorial. That's something you always have to be aware of whenever you're playing a part is whether to adapt the tone to the part or adapt the part to the tone, but we'll talk much more about that as we go on.